Have you ever heard of malware that is written in JPHP? If you like some unusual execution environments for malware, this video is for you. Russian Panda posted about a new malware as a service loader called Defect Loader. And Defect Loader has two stages. The first one is Inu Setup and the second is JPHP. There is an in-depth analysis article on East Centire. I will put the link into the description below. Please check it out. And you may want to follow along. So also check the video description for the sample downloads. The first stage is this setup file, which is provided via Google Ads. And in this case, it's supposedly a Calendly setup file, and it still hasn't gotten that many detections here. It's only at 8 of 71. It's not that much, given that it's been a few days and there's a public article out there. And there might be reason for that. Let's look at this. The TechnicDeasy says it's an Eno setup. Now, the thing you need to know about Inno Setup is Inno Setup provides an easy way to build a setup. So you have like this installation wizard that helps the user and guides them into the installation of some product. Firstly, there are files inside of an Inno Setup that you can extract. And secondly, there's a script as well that describes how these files should be installed and how the wizard should look like. So there are two main components to this. Let's look at how these components can be extracted. We need inno UMP for that. So let's open our PowerShell window. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And with minus H, you can see all of the options here. So the most interesting one is extract. And I also like to use minus D so that the files are not cluttered all over the desktop, but in one folder. So let's do that here. That should do it. And now we see here the files that it extracted. First, there is this DLL, and secondly, there is this install script. If you open this install script, you're going to see here had the suspicious app name a little further, which doesn't add up to be it being Calendly set up. So this should be a giveaway that this is something else. Um, anyhow, this doesn't look interesting at all. Here is just some text and we have the two files that were also extracted here and we have well program files windows and nt directory so not much of interest in this script that we have here and checking the temp folder well when inno setup is run there are certain um variables that are expanded. So this is going to be installed into temp. And there is only this readme. This is the readme for my program. And this file here. This is the first thing I analyzed. This file is clean. So when you check on virus total for idp.dll, um, of course, you shouldn't only base your analysis on virus total. Uh, just trying to summarize here what I uh, found out. So it's just this Inno download plugin, which is a an additional plugin for Inno setup. So you can provide or use downloaded files for the setup. And obviously this has been abused by the malware here. There's even a Bitbucket link where you can check on that. And the certificate was revoked. I'm not sure why because this file is clean. So there is really nothing, nothing suspicious on this one. So how can this do something malicious? Now here's the thing. We can tell Inno Unpack to extract all files 
also the internal files. Let's look at the help again. And it says here, extract internal embedded files such as license and uninstall.exe. So usually these are not interesting, but in this case, I think we should take a look at it. And you might also notice when I set this to verbose, it will also say this is not directly supported, but I would try to unpack it as version 5.4.0.2. So 5.4.3 doesn't seem to be fully supported by Inu Unpack. So let's extract this again, but this time with the option minus M. And let's put this into a different folder name here. And we see now we get a lot more files here among others, a compiled code.bin. So this is the compiled script. And we are going to try to decompile this now. The other things are not that interesting. This is just an image that is shown by the installation wizard. And I think this was some text for English. So you could like provide several files in the setup for each language. And um, yeah, depending on the language of the user, use one or the other. So compiled code. First thing, if you extract the strings, you will already notice some interesting things. Firstly, these are imports for idp.dll. So the functions that idp.dll exports, they are imported here. And when we scroll a little bit, can see some buttons and here we see some interesting strings. These look like base 64 strings, right? And some suspicious PowerShell command and a mention of mrt.exe. Let's check that. Now we use Inno setup decompiler. We see here it already opened my script. So just go to file, open compiled code, and then you get your, your script. And now this is the main. I'm not sure if there's a way to find this particular label. However, since I checked the strings before, there were these interesting base64 strings. So I just clicked through, and at some point I found those base64 strings, namely here. So this is why um, I sticked at, with this function here. We see there is a function called on these strings called paper held. So this is, this is probably the decryption or decoding function. However, one thing you should always try first is see if there's a way to just decode them with base64, right? I'm going to use binary refinery for most of the stuff here. And that's just decoded and it doesn't make sense. So something isn't right. Now let's look for this paper held function. We see it here. And while this looks like base 64, the actual alphabet isn't the same that base 64 uses. Let me show you that. So let's look for an implementation here. And here is the standard lookup table. So the standard lookup table looks like that. It starts with the uppercase letters, lowercase letters, digits, and then we have the special characters. And our lookup table is like that. It's just the other way around. So how can we translate this? Binary Refinery has an option to set the alphabet for the base algorithm. And then we actually get the decoded text. So this was easy, right? 
Now, I would not only like to decode all of those strings, but I would also like to replace them within this script here so that we can make more sense of it. Let's do that. So we just copy and paste this function into a text file. We save this file and I'm gonna save it on the desktop as malware script Pascal. So we also get the syntax highlight. And now what I wanna do is extract those strings within quotes. So I'm looking for base64 strings within single quotes. So let's Google base64 regex and we will find some suitable regex that we can just copy and paste here. Put those into the quotes. And we also put a capture group. Oh, we actually don't need a capture group, do we? Let's see what we get. So this isn't perfect because there's some strings that are empty. I don't want empty strings. Let's put a plus here. That looks quite okay. And now we replace this with resub. And what we want to resub it with, actually we still need the capture group. Yeah, we don't want, we don't want to translate the quotes. So we put the capture group here. Yes, that looks all right. And now we can put our alphabet here. Let's go back to copy and paste the alphabet. And that's not perfect because we still need the quotes in the result string. That looks okay. So we now replace this regs with resub and we should get a script with the replaced strings. We're gonna dump this into malware script diopus. So let's open the script here and that looks better. Now, decoding this isn't that complicated. Just need to know one thing, and that's how this exec function works. So the way you find this is you Google for exec Pascal, and you get here Pascal scripting, the, func the format of the exec function. Let's do this by example for one of the exec commands gonna use this one here and we see now the first fun is the file name what's the file name here it says expand constant so expand constant expands those variables in quotes what is this here can I google that as well so we google you know setup we see now directory constants let's search for the string we find an example here and it says that this is embeds the value of an environmental variable. So what is the environmental variable for this? We can just do echo and we see it's cmd.exe, the full path to, to it actually. So this is cmd.exe, right? So then this one expands this and that's a PowerShell command. So posh command. This should be the working directory, which is this and this is win. So we check again the constants here for win and it's the systems windows directory. So
And last but not least, we have zero, we have one, and we have some global variable here. You can ignore those for most of these exact commands. If you look up what this means, um, this is just whether it should show the command line. So this is probably gonna be zero for all of them. And here it says whether it should wait. So in this case, wait has true and um, show cmd has false. But yeah, this is executing this command, waiting for it to finish and then continue. So this is the way you can find out what the script does. And then the article also mentions two nonsensical commands, which I um, also agree with. Like here, this is quite curious. Um, cmd c find minus e and then mrt.exe. So what happens if you execute this? You just get all of the string sets that uh, have kernel in them. Uh, which are part of mrt.exe. And this command is being executed here, but nothing is done with the output. So that's quite odd, but there might be an explanation knowing that this is a, a malware as a service where maybe the script is built by the malware builder. And if the option isn't turned on, then it might just execute this function without using it. That could be one explanation, but yeah, we don't know for sure unless we find more samples where this is finally gonna be used. Another explanation could be that this is uh, just in development and hasn't been finished or removed from uh, testing things. I can imagine that this kernel string might be used to obtain the full kernel 32.ds string somehow. So without actually having the full string in the binary. And another option could be that, well, maybe if you have an emulator, it will not re return a proper value for that. And that would also function as a way of anti-emulation since they don't have actual files on the system. So the most important part here is that eventually it will obtain an IP from pastebin.com, put it into a URL.txt, and eventually it downloads the file using IDP download file, which is the exported functions from this DLL. It also appends this string to the IP address, which is this. Isn't it? V3, V3 is appended here, and the first part is in here. Load string from file, um, puts the output into V83, and V83 has the address of V1, which is assigned here. So this is um, loading the string from the URL.txt and appending this manual 105.105.zip, downloading that. And that's how the downloader works. So let's now see where that ends up. We can see in the, in the relations tab is the URL. We can click on that. And Varsoto has in the details tab a body hash. So this is the body of the file that was being downloaded here. And at the time where this URL was checked, it was still available. And we see the content type is application zip. So let's click here and analyze. So it seems I cannot do this right now with the analyze button. I'm not sure why. Um, Anyhow, the article by eCentire has some IOCs where you could find those, um, the payload. So I also have the payload and I'm gonna put this also in the description below. So let's close this all and check the payload, which is here.
I'm going to add dot .veer, so I'm not accidentally executing it as long as I don't want that. So what um, we see here is an executable file that's rather big. What is big, installers are usually big, um, wrappers are usually big, and uh, things that pack the whole ex execution environment or if um, a, a legitimate application has been patched, might also explain why it's so big or if it's been bloated. We can read, however, in the article that this part here with the add-ons just contains the Java environment. So this is a an application that runs on the Java VM and chips with its whole environment to make this happen. This is still big though. Let's copy and paste this here. And we're going to put it in Detected Easy. What we see here is it says in the overlay the zip archive. The compiler is Minji W. Now this with the zip archive is interesting. Let's check the strings of this file. So the very first thing that I see here is Launch4j. And Launch4j is a Java 2 EXE wrapper. So Launch4j creates executables out of jar archives. That means we have a jar archive inside of this and it's um, recognized as a zip archive by Detected Easy because jar archives are just zip archives with a manifest that explains where the um, start of the execution is. So if we scroll down, we see here is probably the start of the archive. Um, however, it's not just Java, it's JPHP. JPHP is an implementation of PHP that runs on the Java VM. So that's quite special, so to say. We see some photos, framework stuff. So there's a lot of stuff in here. And that might explain why it's so big because alongside the Java class files, it contains all of the JPHP execution environment. Simplest thing you can do is extract this with 7-zip. Seven, seven so let's do that. It will automatically extract the contents of the zip archive. And now we are here, have a ton of files. The question is, where do we start? Now, thankfully, I have already dealt with ice red in the past. Ice red. And I, well, I didn't remember exactly how to do it. I could look up in my article how to do it. And um, you can see here, among others, that the entry point is in .systemapplication.conf. So let's do that. Let's find the entry point of the application. And we see it's in app main form. Now I also found that most of the relevant stuff is in this app directory. See here two folders, forms and modules and the actual code is in mainform.php. So let's drag this outside. That's what we're going to use. Here, we also have two files that might be interesting because they have a .php extension. Let's drag them outside as well. And we're going to look at the three files here with a focus on the entry point. JPHP files cannot just be decompiled by a Java decompiler. Let's use recaf here as an example. So there are several G compilers, a lot of D compilers. So Java out there just tried recaf recently, just want to test it. And you will see it doesn't work. Unsupported file type. And also if you, let's say we add a dot class extension, change that. So it, it doesn't throw an error, but it also doesn't decompile anything. So this isn't working.
Now, what you can do, however, is transform this in a into a class file that is readable. And the, this was something I found when I analyzed ISRED. Because I know cl Java, Java class files, they always start with Cafe Babe. So the JPHP implementation somehow needs to generate valid Java class files so they can run on the JVM. And this is also happening here. And we see it has like a JPHP header and then the Java class file starts. So you look for Cafe Babe, which is the start of the valid Java class file. You find it here. And if we just cut everything that's below that, before that, you can actually get a valid class file that you can decompile. Now we can do it manually with the hex editor, but but I would like to do this for all of these files here at once. So let's use binary refinery. Let's look at that. So we see here, we cut everything in front by just looking for regex where coffee babe starts and then is all of the rest inside of that. So we dump that to the same file name, but we append class. So um, path is being expanded to the path that we see here. So now we got our class files, need to collect them a little bit. Now there is another thing, we can now analyze this in recalf. So decompilation works, but I cannot add all of these classes because it would just open only one class. So this is a little bit annoying, but there is a remedy for that, just put them in a zip archive. And now we got them all in one location and can look at them here. So when we check all of these, we will soon notice that these don't do much. And the main code is indeed in um, this part of the file, which is the main form, app forms main form dot PHB. And there is another IP address where something is being downloaded from. It's just copy and paste this here so I can, because I cannot change the font size of recalf, so it might be a little bit hard to read. Otherwise, we turn on Java. And a lot of the code that we see here belongs to the JPHP environment. So it's using this variable for the memory, this and also the other this one, and you will see references to it throughout the code. So there is um, room for improvement and you can, for instance, replace all of these references with the actual strings that are inside of that. And you also can replace things like um, invoke method with the actual method that is being called and the arguments that are there. So this would make it way better readable. However, in this case, I I feel like um, the code is very good, well to understand because it speaks to you. It says we download and run the file. So um, might not be worth it to do that for this particular loader here. We see it um, has some commands to execute PowerShell and remove itself from the antivirus exclusions and that one uses the execute Porsche function and yeah, some downloading of, let's decode this, another paste bin, that drop, let's look into this.
and that's the IP address we find here probably for the next download. So we can finally analyze this JPHP script now, but there is room for improvement. So on my article about Icered, I um, did some replacements with regex. However, this isn't ideal because regex cannot count um, how many brackets there are and make precise replacements. And while it worked for Icered, it doesn't work for this particular sample. If you're looking for a project, you may want to write something that uses um, syntax tree parsing to simplify those JPHP Java code into easier to read Java code. So if you're looking for a project, that might be an idea. And um, yeah, let me know what is the most unusual execution environment you came across so far. If you want to learn Mava analysis from the ground up, please check the link in the video description below. It contains a coupon link to my Udemy course for beginners.